How do you decide whether to walk or which route to take? What makes this so unappealing while walking here seems only natural? Lots of factors contribute to what we call walkability and bikeability. Let's look at a few places that got it wrong. These places are not very appealing to pedestrians. These high walls mean low visual interest and no transparency. The high traffic volumes and speeds decrease feelings of comfort and safety, while the presence of setbacks and parking lots further decreases visual interests. A variety of road features can give the sense of being abandoned as a pedestrian, left to fend for oneself on narrow sidewalks as cars race by. This is clear in environments that seem to be built mainly to facilitate movement of cars at high speeds. The most basic thing one needs to be pedestrian friendly is a sidewalk. It is literally the least you can do. So what's the secret? It often comes down to very simple practices. For one thing, places that are dense and host multiple uses and destinations are more enjoyable and feasible places to walk and bike. Many older cities formed this way before the implementation of zoning. And today, many cities are trying to encourage this form of development by zoning to allow a mix of residential and commercial uses. The height of buildings lining the street also makes a difference. When buildings are too tall, the result can be a feeling of being dwarfed. If they're too short, then the long sight lines and open sky ahead will detract from a sense of enclosure. A comfortable height allows for both visual interest and a sense of enclosure, while also remaining at the human scale. Smaller design features are also important. The presence of a tree canopy not only provides shade, but also a comfortable sense of enclosure, visual interest, and scale. Public art and first floor windows add visual interest at the human scale and street or sidewalk level. Transparency describes the degree to which people can see or even imagine what lies beyond the edge of the street, and particularly the degree to which they can perceive human presence and activity. This can be achieved with first floor windows, outdoor dining, and shopping. A street like this one, despite looking slightly apocalyptic during a winter snowstorm, shows a great priority for pedestrian activity in the sense of creating an interesting and a safe environment. This is done through the use of signage, diverse building shapes and colors, outdoor furniture, and greenery, and being closed off to cars. As many municipalities seek to reduce carbon emissions and improve public health, a good place to start is on the sidewalk. Many benefits accompany a population that walks and bikes, but to get there, planners and designers must give full consideration to the pedestrian or cyclist experience and the many small details that can make a big difference.